Hello, kindred spirits and first-time visitors to New England Fine Living. Welcome to my YouTube channel and my 2020 Halloween home tour, where I'm going to be showing you the inside and outside of my home, both day and night. To become an official kindred spirit, simply subscribe.
instead of doing a part two, I thought I would actually have a section here where I'm sharing how I made a lot of these things. So if you're not interested, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. But if you'd like to see how I made a lot of these Halloween decorations, follow along. This glass globe used to light up. It had lights inside. It was silver, but it faded. I left it outside in the garden, so I took off the bottom. And this metal piece was actually from a drink dispenser, so that was in the garden holding it. My thoughts was I was going to spray it with some polyurethane and sprinkle in some glitter. And I left some water in there because I wanted it to be dappled and spotted like the silver was before. I grabbed the polyurethane because I had it and I figured it would hear the glitter, but as you're going to see, when I sprayed it inside, it had gone bad. It actually had turned brown. So I ended up rinsing out the glass ball and you're going to see that I ended up using a spray adhesive, but I just wanted to show you that uh, impromptu mistakes happen. At this point, I have no idea what's going to work and what's not going to. I rinsed it out, so now there's an oily residue, there's water, so I said, hey, why not spray in the tacky glue, because that will certainly have the glitter uh, stick to it. So I'm spraying it in here, and I'm going to pour some glitter in, and I'm going to swirl the bowl around. Now, those kindred spirits who have been with me for a while know I love impromptu projects, and I had this blue glitter, I would have used green. So you think I'm shaking it in here, shaking, shaking, and then it takes me a moment to realize, hmm, nothing's coming out. Oh, yeah, I forgot to take the top off. Go figure. Now it will work. So here, I'm shaking in the glitter, and now I'm going to spread it around inside of this glass ball and coat it. And I realized quickly that I'm going to have to do some more spray and some more glitter, but it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. I just realized that if I got a piece of plastic wrap, I could hold it over the opening of this ball and really give it the good shaking that it needs. And I'm going to give it another coat of tacky spray and go at it with the glitter one more time because you can never have too much glitter. For now, my work here is done. I'm going to let it air dry and start working on another project. But now I'm going to show you how I lit up this glass ball. Here it is in the dining room as you saw it in the YouTube video you just saw. And inside I put in a large Silum light stick. And you can get these glow sticks at drug stores, craft stores. But what surprised me when I opened up the package is they now have twist glow sticks that you can turn on and off, which I think is fantastic. I also tried one of those very small lights that you have batteries. You can put it in a closet or a drawer. It's like a little press light. It worked great, but it wasn't the color I wanted. For the table setting, I have a leaf here that I got, I think at the dollar store last year, some black and white dishes that I had on hand. I have some of the white Limoges dishes that I got at a thrift store a couple years ago. And this is a plastic pewter looking tray I used as my charger. And once again, yes, I know my utensils are wrong on the right hand side. My mother would be horrified. The catering company I work for would be horrified. My only excuse is I did have a headache when I was doing this and I can't believe I missed it. For my glowing green drinks, I actually used apple flavored Gatorade that I got at the grocery store and I put a tea candle inside of a glass coaster and I just put it directly behind the glass, lit the candle and it gave it that eerie glow in the dark. Now these candlesticks, once again, super impromptu. I was looking in a drawer and I found these two seated glass hurricane globes that I forgot to return to Home Depot and I first tried it in the candle upward. Nah. 
not that way. So I just flipped it over and said, you know what? It's not super bad looking, it's different. So I left it there. It made me feel a little bit safer about the candles and it just gave it a different look. And I'm pointing at the chandelier there. I have a lot of people asking me about that. It is on a video of how I made that, or I should say how I painted that. It used to be brass. And I got my little spider here on the clock. I don't think he made the video. And in the fireplace here, I have the cauldron that I showed you. I had some lit bubbles in there. These are actually Christmas ornaments that I grabbed from the attic and a piece of white tulle. And let me show you how I did that real quick. I already had the cauldron, so what I did was I took the containers that the glass ornaments were in and I put it inside there. And then I took this white tulle. I don't even remember what that was from. It must have been some sort of costume that I was making. And I just tucked it inside of the cauldron here. And then all I did was I grabbed the ornaments, I took off the silver tops, and then simply placed them inside on top of the tool. And then I added a little set of lights. And let me step back. I made it first without the lights, and then when it was in the fireplace, I realized I needed lights. So I took one of my little battery-operated strands, and I will show you that in one second. For the cauldron in my kitchen, I purchased a little mechanism as an impromptu, it was great placement at the register. Um, I grabbed it, it was a mist maker. Never used one before, but a friend had one and I loved it. It's just placed in a bowl of water and I put some black gauze around the edge just to hide the cord a little bit and filled it with water, plugged it in, and that is it. Now the placement of the jack-o'-lantern in the opening of the YouTube video was pretty much prompted by something I saw in a magazine. They showed the pumpkin inside a window looking out with leaves and I loved the look of it so I decided to place this in our garage window so that when we sit early in the morning for coffee or late at night we can look down and have a little bit Halloween spirit looking back up at us. For my pretend apothecary, I grabbed a few things that I had. These green items are actually leaves from my lemon verbena, and from day one, I thought they always looked like caterpillars, so those are my dried caterpillars. I grabbed a few things from my spice cabinet, like my nutritional yeast, chopped almonds. I have some of my basil there. That happens to be an, uh, let me see, an embalming jar of all things. It was at a house that my parents owned in Maine. I have no idea why that would be there, but uh, that was kind of creepy to realize. But now I have it, which is even creepier. I have some um, dried flowers from the garden. And let's see, I have my mortar and pestle, some more dried flowers. I love the look of these. These are just the pods of, I'm going to draw a blank. I can see the flowers in my head and... Um, if I remember, by the time I finish this, I will put the wording over it. Ah yes, my saging sticks. I brought them out of the drying shed. I burnt one, and I was so excited until it smelled like a Cheech and Chong movie was being filmed in my home. So then I put it in boiling water, and it smelled wonderful. So that's how I will use those. And what else do I have here? I actually have the bottoms of the gourds that I dried and then killed and then these are the same flowers that came from what I just showed you they look like little tiny feathers to me so I just threw those in there too I wanted everything to have um, a very neutral color palette all these bottles most of them are from my childhood home that I collected these candlesticks were from the fall haul that I did and I got those at the Christmas tree shop same with the raven candle this is pretty self-explanatory. Honestly, I was not feeling well and I got a little tired and I wanted to change this whole thing out, but near the end of the day, I literally just stuck the raven in and the spider in and called it a day. 
In here, I have a picture of my husband and myself from a masquerade ball from the years past. This is the faux greens I mentioned. I painted them black and gray years ago for another Halloween party, and I still had them in the attic. And of course, our cute little bats hanging out here. And to go with the black and white theme, I already had the picture of my childhood home there. It worked perfectly in the room, so I just added a few other accents around it. When I mentioned to my husband that everything was dying in the garden, I literally thought at that point, well, hmm, I might as well make it a cemetery and leave them there for now. Those uh, gravestones I was getting ready actually to toss. They're plastic foam things I've had for years, and I'm glad I kept them for this. And like I mentioned, I ruined my gourds, guys. I wanted to dry them a little bit more, so I took them down from the fireplace mantle while I was decorating for Halloween, dried them a bit more in the oven, and I just completely got rid of the color. And here I am, traipsing around, dressed as a ghost, and let me tell you, it was interesting to be doing this even out in the yard, let alone inside of my own house. I did it all for you, my kindred spirits. And the leaf garland that I made last year, and I do have a tutorial on another YouTube video, and the besom broom that I made, which is also on a previous tutorial. I am so excited how many of you actually sent messages to me that you made the garlands and the besom brooms. I would love to see it. So if you'd like to share that with me on Instagram, tag me, I think that would be fantastic. And this last picture is just showing that I put one of those Silum light sticks when I was playing with it under the pumpkin here in the kitchen. So at night I might turn it on just for a little fun glow. If you're still here with me and watching, thank you so much. At this time, if you would like to take a moment and ask me a question, why don't you ask below? Because I'm going to be pulling together a question and answer while I'm carving a pumpkin here. And I'm going to grab a couple of the questions. It could be, um, you know, about the YouTube channel if you want to start one. I need some specific questions. Or um, if you have a question about one of the other videos or products I use, ask away. And like I said, I will grab a couple and answer them while I have my hand inside of a pumpkin and carving it. Bye now and enjoy the rest of your day.